I'm Ken Doan, and I had the great honour of um, being commissioned by the Mossman Gallery by John Cheeseman uh, and Katrina Cashman probably, it must be a year or so ago now. And um, I knew a little bit about the attack on Sydney Harbour by the Japanese submarines, but of course not, not that much about it. I was only two when it happened. But in some ways, I guess I am the right person to attempt this opportunity or this project because I am quite well known in Japan and I've spent a great deal of my painting life making paintings about Sydney Harbour, mostly optimistic paintings about Sydney Harbour. I'm fortunate enough to live beside Sydney Harbour. I look at it every day. I swim in it most days of the year. And like all of the artists who've had the great uh, the great gift of living in Mossman, you are continually uh, inspired by the harbour. But I've never had the opportunity to look at it in this sense, to look kind of under the harbour, I suppose, or look at one of the great mm, tragedies uh, of the harbour. I'll show you where I started. I felt right from the start that I was, as, I was interested to find out what these young, brave Japanese submariners must have felt before the attack. And I had always imagined that in the, in the sense, that kind of samurai feeling would be something within them and that something that would be handed down uh, through the Japanese navies and armies and air forces over the years. So the first, uh, the first work uh, was really the Pile Light, which is in the middle of Sydney Harbour. Uh, the ferry still going across and in the sense being attacked by a kind of traditional samurai warrior. All of these preliminary drawings were done without um, any kind of reference of exactly what the submarine might have looked like or even what the blokes themselves might have looked like. I just wanted to find out what was in my, what was in my mind. So I think this is probably the second drawing where I've drawn the, the three submarines more like bombs and in a sense, one, two, three, four, five, six, of the six main guys uh, that, that were in them, and of course the Japanese flag. And for a lot of these works, or even say a lot of the drawings, I painted them in a slightly Japanese manner in the sense of the brush stroke or making them fairly fast, fairly immediate. So it's the relationship between uh, the hand and, and the brain. What's in there? How quickly can you get it down? Again, this is one of the earlier drawings. Uh, the fleet in Sydney Harbour, the, the sense that the Japanese uh, were coming to invade that particular space, to conquer that particular harbour, and of course without the Opera House in those days, the kind of familiar skyline of the harbour in the distance and, and the bridge. And with the Navy ships, right, Again, I didn't look them up to find out exactly what the Chicago looked like or things like that. More what it might have felt like, more what a ship feels like, or to me it feels like. The man in the midget submarine, or in a sense the man inside the bomb, because that's what I really felt that they were. The shape of the submarine, the shape of the man, even though there were two people in each submarine, and the lines of the of the water, again, in a kind of slightly Japanese manner. Uh, I first went to Japan in 1962, and I've been very interested in Japanese art for a long time. And the mark, and the brush stroke, and the way that even the simplest stroke, if it's put down with some confidence, can be really quite beautiful. In this drawing, um, I made two references in this entire suite of pictures related to Sidney Nolan, related to, to Ned Kelly. I was struck by the fact that I imagine, or maybe it's only me, but I imagine that the, at the end of the periscope, it's a kind of, it's almost like a Ned Kelly, it's almost like a Ned Kelly helmet. So I drew it, I drew the end of the periscope that way. And again, I made the water in a kind of oriental way, a kind of Japanese way. 
The first person to in fact see the submarine, the first submarine that got caught in the net, was in fact a Scotsman uh, who rode out in a rowing boat. And so I'm sure he literally wasn't wearing a Scottish outfit, but um, I made him vaguely Scottish and with a kind of one of the, with a, with a big Scottish hat on. And uh, this was the submarine, the first submarine caught in the net. And to most people, an absolute total surprise that anything like this could happen. Uh, this print, this poster, uh, I first did in, uh, in 1980, and I guess it's one of the things that people first knew of my work and that continuing interest in Sydney Harbour. And so I've taken that original crayon drawing or a print of that original crayon drawing and superimposed it with the Japanese symbol of war. So here's the first painting in the sequence of 15 works. This is essentially was the plan. Uh, this is the Japanese symbol of war that, you, that I had on that last poster. Uh, the simple principle was three midget submarines would make their way from Tokyo through various islands in the South Pacific and they would attack Sydney Harbour. An incredibly audacious feat. This second uh, picture is based on a very early Japanese uh, print, probably from the 16th or 17th century, I'm not sure. Uh, it was called F uh, Farewell to the Ferryman, and it showed this beautiful Japanese girl waving goodbye in the original uh, to the ferryman going in his, in his ferry. It was a rather soft kind of print. I've changed it, obviously I've changed the, the sea into red, I've put the submarines in, I've simplified to some degree uh, the woman herself, and then I've made these little, I've scraped in the sea, and again used a kind of, um, a kind of Japanese way of symbolising the waves themselves. Farewell, farewell to the submarines from Farewell to the Ferryman. This one, a man may journey to a place he knows, but it takes a man of rare courage to go to a place from which there is little hope of return. They were the words of the Japanese minister to Australia, uh, Tatsuo Kawai, in 1942. He was still here, hadn't gone back, or hadn't been sent back to Japan. And up in the corner is Sydney Harbour from the air and the flight of uh, the seaplane from uh, Lieutenant Ito that flew across Sydney Harbour a week before the attack um, to simply find uh, where, the, where the fleet might be within the harbour itself. This one is a kind of incredible statement that, um, that uh, Katsuhiro Ban said about the attitude that it was necessary for Japanese people to have. Nations that fear death will surely be destroyed. It is necessary for the youth of Japan to no take notice of this. Sure to die is the spirit that will bring about final victory, that that's what you had to believe in these, I imagine, that you have to believe in this kind of situation, something that uh, I guess only people who have been in war re really understand. So there was the statement that he made, there's the symbol of the six submariners in their, in their submarines, and into this I've just scraped kind of heads, almost skull-like heads symbolising the six boys that led this mission. This is a statement by the Mamoru Ashib. Our mother is old now and all alone at home, so please don't say anything until you receive this notice. This, he was having dinner with his brother and he was essentially saying, don't tell mum because you know, I might not come back. Then he said, there is no greater wish than to be given the most honourable place for a soldier to die as I have been. In other words, he knew what he had to 
or wanted to achieve, he knew where he was going and I guess he really felt that there was very little chance that he might come back. And he shared a meal with his brother and so I put some kind of small sake cups and some little sake drinks and maybe some plums that they might have been drinking. But I've also put in the revolver because in the end he shot himself uh, uh, when they were being discharged, shot himself uh, and his companion. He saw that as the most honourable way, the Japanese way. No cause for alarm. This was the kind of feeling in Sydney Harbour or in Sydney at that particular time. And yet, a week before the attack, um, Ito, in his float plane, which had been launched from the mother submarine out, uh, out to sea, off the heads, or probably down off Kayama, he had circled around Sydney Harbour as low as 150 metres a couple of times and had been caught in the searchlights. And as he said, every t he was at 700 metres when he was first caught in the searchlight, and then he had to quickly get up into the clouds. So. There was the Chicago uh, waiting, Sydney Harbour, the net from which they'd have to go through uh, North and South Head, uh, and his plane being caught in the searchlights. But he lived, I believe, till his 90s. Uh, he came, I think, to Australia sometime in the, in the latter part of his life. This was kind of the defences on Middle Head at that time. I think they were probably a bit more sophisticated than that, but I've often go up to Middle Head and the big cannons are still there that I think have been there uh, since the First World War. Uh, the cannonballs are still there. Um, I used the pillbox that they had up there, again in a slight reference to Ned Kelly's uh, Sidney Nolan's painting, and I repeated the uh, the sunrise that was coming up that particular morning where it was, although not known at that time, it was in a sense a Japanese sunrise because the submarines were just outside waiting. This is just before the attack. I symbolised the three submarines as kind of, um, you know, frightening warrior masks, the three clocks are the times in which they uh, were ready to attack. And I painted the sea in very much a Japanese style, very much using the brush strokes to, to add to that sense that what they wanted to do was to make Sydney Harbour, or be it briefly, uh, a, Jap a, a Japanese harbour. And here in the distance, the harbour. I believe there was strong southerly wind. It was quite a dark night. Um, they had these radio waves that also the submarines had to go through before they went through the net that was somewhere up, up there. So south head, north head, the light, the storm, the Japanese waiting. So 10.35 in the evening on the 31st of May, 1942 the first submarine is caught in the boom net and, and is depth charged. And at the same time, the two submariners of the captain shoots uh, the lieutenant that was there with him. So even at this stage, people really still didn't know what was going on. And certainly a lot of people, including the heads of the the Navy, I suppose, and that were having dinner that night in Tresco with the, uh, with the captain of the Chicago, still had no inkling that Sydney Harbour was under attack. So, as soon as that first submarine was depth charged, suddenly messages happened to me, had to be flying back and forth across the harbour to the various uh, people in charge. Uh, you, you couldn't send a message from Taylor's Bay, which is where the submarine uh, was attacked uh, off, the, off the, the light. You had to go back to Vaucluse and to Vaucluse back into 
a God not. So there's an incredible amount of confusion. Uh, people were saying, yes, something has hit the pile light. And some guy saying, look, it's a bloody submarine. Uh, other people are saying, no, there's a suspicious object in the net. We're not sure what it is. Um, but then they realised there were subs in the harbour. We have to do something about it. Um, the official uh, line came out to say we have to attack with the least possible delay because the opportunity is lost if a vessel escapes at sea. Uh, these were basically all the kind of official things that went back and forth, but uh, then I was struck by a comment of one of the sailors on one of the, one of the, the Navy ships. He said, where's the bloody tr trigger on this thing? In other words, they weren't really expecting to be fighting in Sydney Harbour. So here's the attack on Sydney Harbour itself. There were tracer bullets going everywhere, depth charges, explosions, incredible amount of confusion. No one really knew what was going on. And I must say, you know, to make this picture, uh, I had to be, um, I had to work very fast. There is a, a kind of, I can do it with my painting hand, bang, 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 bang. You have to make these lines very strongly, and again, in a slightly Japanese manner. But these lines of the tracer bullets and of the light and of the gunfire, you have to do it as fast as that to make it work. Then, you step back and look at it for a while, see whether it needs some other little, there's all kinds of bits of paint here, there's bits of fluorescent paint, there's bits of enamel, there's bits of shiny paint uh, for the ships themselves, there's bits of watercolour, there are all kinds of things. It's an attack on Sydney Harbour and as a painter, you in a sense have to attack, attack the canvas itself. I think in a sense this was the hardest picture for me to do because I've never, you know, gone into the studio and think, well, I'll make a picture of people drowning or being killed. And when I first did it, I did one part of it and then I left it for a while in the studio and looked at it for a long time to decide what I'd do next. I think the first part that I put in was this man's face here. The top is obviously uh, the submarine, here's the, the water, uh, but I wanted to do the feeling of people under the water not able uh, to get up. And so it was quite a spare kind of painting. And I looked at it in the studio for a long time and I realised it needed more and then, then I started to put on all these other heads. I started to put in the feeling, the explosion. I started to put all of these marks again, pretty much like the attack. Uh, painting, you actually have to attack the canvas and do it and do it uh, fairly rapidly. Um, your brain is uh, only just ahead of picking up the paint to do it. Um, so, as I said, it's not a subject that I had uh, any experience doing, but I hope it's a powerful picture and I hope that it uh, uh, tells people, something of the sacrifice that various people made, which in a sense I think is probably what this exhibition is about. It's about two things, isn't it? It's about the act of what happened. Uh, it's about remembering the sacrifice that people made so that we can uh, live in such a beautiful place as Mossman or Sydney or Australia or stuff like that. And that people that were enemies can become close friends and allies. Uh, these are the names of the 21 people that lost their life that night that were in the uh, sheltering in the, in the Cutterball, the ferry that was being used uh, as accommodation that was right next to the Chicago. The torpedo missed the Chicago, hit the Cutterball. 21 people, 19 Australians and two uh, British ratings uh, died. So these are the crosses symbolising all of them. These are the ships that were still left in the harbour. And this is the big crane that they brought in the next day to bring up uh, the remains of the submarine that Matsuo and Suzuki uh, had, uh, had lost their life in. 
This is the last painting in the whole sequence. This is the funeral that was given by Rear Admiral Muirhead Gould to the Japanese submariners. They didn't know at that time that there'd been a third submarine that had escaped out through the heads and had turned north. The mother submarines were waiting south of Kayama, but one turned north. And I think it was only about 10 years ago that the remains of that submarine, with the, uh, the bodies obviously still inside, were discovered off the reef up in Newport. But this is essentially what uh, Gu Gu uh, Muirhead Gould said. I ask you, should we not accord full honours to such brave men? It must take courage of the very highest order to go out in a thing like that steel coffin. How many of us are really prepared to make one thousandths of the sacrifice that these men made? Now, I think that's, that's a pretty perfect summation of, no one wants to go to war, no one wants to do any of these things, but if you were forced into that situation, these guys showed immense courage in what we did. So here he they were, Truman, Amori, Matsuo, Matsuo and Suzuki. At this time, the submarine of Van and Hashib had in fact escaped. So, 15 paintings, um, part of Australian history that I think is very important and that, uh, and that we should never forget. And as I said a few minutes ago, the great thing about it is I think that uh, um, previous enemies can become the best of friends.